Hey, here we are, week five out of six of ESS Excel on the boat. I just want to say thank you for your commitment to uh, diving into this with uh, our conversations, diving into this and uh, listening to the content, reading the content. Hopefully you spent some time in First Peter um, uh, to, to really dive into the Word. Hopefully you've looked at some of the scriptures that are there on the worksheet that go with it. And hopefully you've been encouraged in your relationship with the Lord and in your relationship with others through this time. As we talk about this week's theme, storms, storms and stumbles, we've, we've, we've seen the invitation, we've heard the invitation to become and follow Jesus. We've talked about dropping our nets. We've talked about how our, our faith and our walk with Jesus should impact our family. We've talked about the power of personal belief and now we gotta talk about some storms and stumbles. We all have them, we've had our own, we've all had our fair share of storms, we've all had our fair share of mistakes and trips that we, uh, trip ups that we've had, um, but that doesn't disqualify us from experiencing the love of God and from continuing to follow after Jesus. I wanna read this scripture with Peter here, it's one of the encounters he has of a storm, Peter and the disciples, from Matthew 14, verses 24 through 33. But the boat was already a long distance from land, battered by the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw Jesus walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter responded and said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. And Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and, and walked toward Jesus. But seeing the wind, he became frightened. And when he began to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus, immediately, Jesus reached out with his hand and took hold of him and said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind stopped. And those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, You are truly God's son. I love this passage as Peter walks on water in the middle of the storm. It's one of the encounters that, uh, that Peter and the disciples have while experiencing the storm. There were other accounts where they were rowing with all of their might, but the winds and the waves were beating them up and Jesus was asleep in the boat and finally he gets up and says, peace be still and the winds and the waves cease. And, uh, and, and there was the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus talk to them about building on the rock or building on the sand, that a storm's coming and, and, and that one will stand and one will fall. I, I think if you look at the gospel accounts and the storms that are encountered, I think something that we would see and we can all probably uh, agree with is that storms in life are inevitable. Storms and stumbles in life are inevitable. They are going to happen. Uh, the absence of a storm uh, or doesn't mean, or the presence of a storm doesn't mean the absence of God. And, and sometimes it's in those storms, it's in those stumbles, it's in those low places in our life where we're facing obstacles that we didn't see coming maybe, and that, that really Jesus reveals to himself to us in a greater way and he helps us and he shows himself as Savior and Lord. That's what happens here with Peter. You know, sometimes storms come up in our life because of the things we stumble over, our own sin, our own mistakes, uh, the way that we hurt people and uh, around us as we make those mistakes and those errors. And, and, and sometimes that creates a storm in our life. And sometimes there's storms in our life, things that we walk through that we didn't see coming, that we, we didn't expect, that they cause us to stumble. We might doubt a little bit. We might have some fears. We might lose our focus for a little bit and really that's what I think uh, storms and stumbles try to do. They try to steal our focus away from our relationship with the Lord and what He wants to do for us and, and the enemy wants to use that storm to distract us and make us lose heart in our relationship with Jesus. The enemy wants to use that storm to destroy us, keep us off course, but God wants to show us in the middle of it that He's with us and that He's there to help us. You know, storms can come to us in so many different ways. They, like I said, it could be mistakes that we made, our own sin. It could be uh, events that we encounter that we never saw coming. It could be things in life that 
Um, uh, it could be the loss of a loved one. It could be a financial expense. It could be um, uh, re relationship turmoil um, and people that we're connected with. Storms that we never saw coming that are tough for us to navigate, that make it difficult for us to keep moving forward. But it's in those storms that God reveals more of who He is to us. And that's what happens here. You know, the, the Bible says that they were getting beat up. They were a long distance from land. They were on the boat a long distance from land. And that they were being battered by the waves and that the winds were contrary. And there's sometimes in life that it just seems like we're getting beat up by all that life throws at us. That we're, that the winds and there's opposition against us every time we try to do right. Every try, try to, uh, we try to do better. Every time we try to chase something great that it seems like all hell breaks loose and, and starts to work against us. But I want to encourage us today that storms and stumbles do not disqualify us from being able to experience more of God. In fact, they become a way for us to learn more of who He is if we'll cry out to Him. I love that Peter in this story, he defies the laws of physics and he walks on water just because Jesus said, come to me. And he got out. There, there are things that we never thought we would do, we'd be able to do in life, just by hearing something that Jesus is saying to us and responding in obedience to it and having the courage to go. And there are things that we will end up saying, man, I never thought I could do that. I never know, thought the Lord would do that with me. But he will. And there's times where we start doing that and doing things that are miraculous, doing things that are the works and the wonder in the display of God's love and His power, and we'll get our, we'll get, we'll lose focus. The Bible says that Peter saw the wind. Now I don't know how in the world he saw the wind. I, I'm sure he felt it, but I think maybe he saw the effect of the wind. He saw the boat was still rocking. He saw maybe the garments um, that were on his friends that they were moving back and forth. Maybe he saw the waves that were still rumbling and crashing, and 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 he he lost sight. And I think when we get in storms and when we stumble in life, it's because we're looking at the circumstances around us. We get focused on the wrong things. We can say everything is working against us and we miss that God is there with us and He's willing to work for us. And these waves distracted Him to the point that He, that he, he lost His focus and we do this so many times. You know, we're, we're going to lose focus in life. But this is our encouragement in the midst of storms and, and, and stumbles and the things we can't control to keep our focus on Jesus and to not lose heart. Jesus said, oh, you a little faith, why did you doubt? And uh, as, as Peter began to sink, he cried out to the Lord for help. And the Bible says immediately Jesus grabbed him by the hand and gave him help and rescued him. And then he, Jesus got in the boat with them, and the waves, they, 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 uh, and the wind was silent, and the waves were still, and they said, truly, this is the Son of God, and they worshiped Him. And, you know, you can't wrestle a storm down. I don't ever see anybody trying to go grab a tornado and pull it down, or a hurricane and pull it down. And there's some things we just can't wrestle down. Sometimes we have to outlast it by fixing our eyes on Jesus and crying out to Him for help. And when he reaches down, uh, grabbing the hand that he reaches and getting up with him. This text speaks to me that our connections matter. It matters who's on our boat. We need people that know how to not abandon ship. We, know, we need people who know how to anchor down, who know how to keep rowing, who know how to support us. And just because things get difficult, they don't leave. And I think our connections, the people we are connected to, need to be people who can outlast storms need to be people who build with the storm in mind. They need, to, they need to be people who know how to focus in the middle of storms. And I, I think you can find those people that you respect that way by knowing the storms that they've endured. And uh, Proverbs says that the one who faints in the day of adversity, his strength is not very great. That means the, the opposite has to be true. If you stand firm in the day of adversity, your strength must be great. Peter Marshall said it this way, uh, when life gets difficult, remind us that oaks grow strong under contrary winds. Sometimes it's the adversity and the way we focus and keep attention on Jesus in adversity. Those are the things that allow us to earn the respect of others. And, and those are the things where we give respect to others when they've been through hardship, they've been through storms unimaginable, they've been battered and beat up, 
but still they stand and they're still there and they're still pursuing after Jesus. They're still on the boat. Look, storms and stumbles, they're going to be inevitable in our life. We're all going to face them. We don't always get to choose what they are or when they come, but we can be ready for them. We can have people in our boat that are ready to stick it out with us. We can prepare our hearts to stay focused on Jesus, and we can be prepared to cry out for help whenever we feel like life's beating us up and expect Jesus to reach out to us a helping hand and to save us. Look, we're following Jesus. It doesn't excuse us from having to experience storms. But I also want to encourage you that that storm could be the very thing that God wants to use to reveal more of himself to you and reveal more of who he wants you to be. Maybe you'll do something impossible, like walk on water, just like Peter did. I don't know, but we got to stay on the boat to see. Thanks for being with us this week. I hope you join us again for our, our, our last one. We're going to have breakfast in the conference room. Jump in there with us. I'll see you next week on the boat.